McKinsey published a study last year estimating the number of jobs that would be lost due to robots and automation globally by 2030. I'm not giving you that number today because it's not important, it's irrelevant, it's a red herring. And the reason is this, when the media talks about robots versus humans in the context of work, they tend to conflate a number of issues. Responsibilities, jobs, employment, and human livelihood and dignity. These are not the same thing. And it's important to make a distinction between them because when you really think about it, what we care about is just the last part of that story. People's ability to provide and care for their loved ones and themselves, their ability to find meaning in their lives. Everything else is just a means to an end. But let me take a step back for a moment and explain things from the beginning. Responsibilities and jobs. Jobs consist of a set of responsibilities that might change over time. And in this era, I like to think of jobs as falling to sort of three primary categories. The first, jobs that, are become fully, uh, jobs that will become fully automated. Second, jobs where humans and robots can work together. And finally, new economy jobs, jobs that will be created because of the robots, jobs that only humans can do, like design new robots. <laughs> that first category, jobs that will be automated, tend to fall into the following sets of responsibilities. Dirty, dangerous, and dull. Case in point, 323. This is the number of people who died in India over the last three years because they were cleaning sewers. That works out to about one person every three days. A group of engineering students in India took a look at this and decided that this was completely unacceptable. So, calling themselves Gen Robotics, they designed a prototype and just this week announced a deal with the state of Kerala to produce 10 more of these robots. At the launch event, the chief minister of Kerala talked about a man named Nishad, an auto rickshaw driver who died while trying to save two people who were stuck in a drain. These robots are going to save lives. Again, dirty, dangerous, and dull. These are the types of jobs that can and should be automated. A lot of factory work also tends to fall into this first category, and I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute. But first, we could talk about the second category, jobs where humans and robots can work together. My wife, along with her professor, recently launched a startup called Diligent Robotics, focusing on the healthcare space. They interviewed hundreds of healthcare professionals and learned that nurses on average spend about 30% of their time, 30% of their time hunting and gathering, searching for supplies. This is not what the nurses went to school for. This is not a good use of their time. And so Diligent is building a robot that will take care of this kind of menial labor, allowing nurses to operate at the top of their license, doing the kind of work that they really love, doing the kind of work that humans are uniquely qualified to do, namely interacting with patients, families, caring for people in their time of need. This is a good thing. Another example would be Savvy Oak. Savvy Oak has a robot called Relay, and it delivers things. So Relay can deliver room service, extra towels, replenish your hotel toiletry supply. And you know, Relay is a really hard working robot. Um, in one month, it made more than 200 deliveries. And staff love the robot because over the course of their day, they have many responsibilities of which delivery is just one. And they're more than happy to offload that particular responsibility to the robot. So, this is pretty great, right? The humans get to keep their jobs and delegate the unwanted responsibilities to the robots. But what about employment in other industries? What about those factory workers whose jobs are going to be fully automated? The answer to this sort of falls into two parts. Short term versus long term, and the impact to the individual versus to the impact to society at large. Again, these are not the same thing. In the short term, there will be individual pain as the market tries to meet demand with existing supply. Just because there are jobs doesn't mean that we have the right people with the right skills to fill them. 
Human beings don't learn new skills overnight. We're not computers. There will be people who will find it really, really difficult to transition in this new economy, and we need to take care of those people. But there is hope. There are initiatives like uh, Obama's Power Initiative, dedicating $28 million to workforce retraining in Appalachian states, training coal miners to fly drones. There are initiatives like the Tech Jobs Tour to connect employers to non-traditional candidates. These are all short-term initiatives can help address the labor market challenge. Longer term, we're going to need a revamped education system. We're going to need a system where Everyone has access to a great STEAM curriculum. And I say STEAM because we can't ignore the arts. The arts can't be the sole provenance of the rich. And this is why. Siri was launched just seven short years ago, Alexa a couple years later, and today we have Jibo, Cosmo, and all these really adorable home robots. And who in this room, when they were a child, would have imagined that there'd be a job creating quirky AI personalities for AI assistants and robots? I certainly didn't. And so that's the thing, right? The future is unknowable. We don't know what the jobs of the future will be. So the only thing that we can do today is prepare our youth for a future of possibilities. Make sure that everyone has equal access to a broad, rigorous education because the future is unknowable. What we do know is the past, we know history. And what we know from history is this. A lot of people like to cite the Industrial Revolution as an example of where human society has benefited from technological innovation. And this is true in the long run and for society as a whole. But we can't forget the individual suffering that happened during that time, the displaced farm workers, the children who were forced to labor in factories instead of going to school because they were the only ones small enough to move between machines. You can't minimize this individual suffering even though human society as a whole benefited from this progress. And so that brings me back to the beginning now. Again, what is it that we really care about? What is the problem that we're trying to solve? Human livelihood and dignity. Access to food, shelter, healthcare, education. The opportunity to make a meaningful impact in society. Because if we could achieve these goals outside of the labor market, if we could have universal healthcare, basic income, a revamped education system, If we could have a new social contract that allowed us to ensure that everyone, the most vulnerable in society, were taken care of, and everyone had an equal opportunity to benefit from this new economy, to benefit from the age of robots, then we wouldn't be talking about robots versus humans. We would be talking about robots and humans. So that's the vision. There are so many wonderful organizations already tackling different parts of this problem. Join one of them, pick one. I believe our keynote speaker today is leading one of these organizations. Do something, because only we can create the future we want to see. Thank you.